Welcome back to Reform Perspective. I'm Josiah Espinoza. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, gender roles, uh, maleness, femaleness. Um, if there's one thing in our culture that they're trying to, to uh, basically destroy is this uh, notion that maleness and femaleness are different um, and that um, females are just exactly the same as males, especially when it comes to the role of the family. Now, uh, I'm married, married seven years, have three kids, and I think the reason that my marriage has been such a happy marriage and such a successful marriage is primarily the grace of God, of course, but secondarily because we um, adhere to what we believe is the biblical notion of marriage, um, and that is that I have a specific role in the family, and my wife has a specific role in the family that lends to a successful marriage. I am uh, the worker, the provider. Um, I am able to work uh, and able to provide for my family uh, so that my wife does not have to work in a job. She works all day, I mean, all day, every day, in the house cleaning and cooking and caring for the kids. And so to say that she doesn't work it would be a ridiculous thing to say, but she is a hard worker. And just because she doesn't get paid for the work that she does, what she does for our family is infinitely priceless. Um, I could not put a price on what she does here in the family. And, you know, uh, economists and um, sociologists have tried to put a price on what the 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 mother does in the home. And if they were to be get paid for what they do, they'd make almost like a hundred grand a year, which makes absolute sense because um, they're basically on call. They are chefs. They are teachers. They are nurse, nurses. Um, there's so many things all wrapped up into one um, beautiful entity, and that is the woman. And the problem I have with uh, this, this third wave feminism is that um, it tries to say that feminists, this third wave feminist, um, don't need men. They don't need men to provide for them. They don't need men to care for them. They don't need men to have children. They don't need men um, to uh, make society continue running. All they need is women. And if that's how they choose to live, well, then so be it. But I don't think it is the... Um, the most significant way in which they're going to flourish as human beings. God designed men and women to be one with each other. Um, and almost all my friends that I have agree with this notion that um, women and men have specific roles. Um, and they are all happy in their marriage. I mean, I'm not saying that they don't have problems that they don't need to work on certain issues in their marriage, that they don't need to work on their communication with one another, that they don't need to work on um, what it means to raise a family together. I'm not saying any of that. What I am saying, though, is that um, you know, when it comes to the roles of men and women, um, I think w men should be proud of being men and women should be proud of being women, especially if you adhere to a more traditional role. Um of maleness and femaleness, husband and wife. Um, if you adhere to a more conservative role, then I think that is a wonderful thing and not to, to not be ashamed of that, even though society wants to say that that's bad or that's wrong or that's um, not good for society at large. But I say, who cares what society thinks? I say, who cares what third wave feminism thinks? Um, I say, if you're happy and your marriage is a success and your kids are growing up healthy and strong, then I would say continue doing what you're doing and don't let anybody ever try to take you down um, with their uh, portrayal of roles. Um, now, if the woman wants to work in a family, that's fine. If she wants to 
um, pursue a career in in hopes of um, somehow fulfilling a sense of um, I guess fulfillment, success, whatever. Maybe she's feeling empty and she wants to feel this completed in this way because she feels like she can do more than just take care of kids. Well, then that's going to be between um, the two in that relationship, the man and the woman between that in that relationship. But um, I think that when you do that, you end up missing out on a lot of blessings. Especially when it comes to the raising of children. Women have the most important role when it comes to the family. And that is the forming of the hearts and the minds of the children. And I do uh, take that role seriously as a father in training my children as well. When it comes to respect and when it comes to understanding authority. And when it comes to um, even certain aspects of education, hard work. Um, but when it comes to the overall general ideas of life, my wife is the one who takes that role very seriously. And she's, and I'm not saying she doesn't struggle with this idea that, um, that just, she doesn't feel, um, like she's making a difference, but she's making a world of difference. She's raising three souls, um, to be participants of this society and to be, uh, law-abiding, God-fearing citizens of the United States. Um, and because of this, uh, I know that my children are going to be able to be um, upstanding citizens, God-fearing citizens, and hopefully uh, nation shakers for the sake of God and for the sake of country. Um, because of the hard work of my parents who adhered to a more conservative roles, I know that um, I'm my brothers and sisters have now been able to be more successful in life because of what my parents have done. And so all this to say, look, be proud of being a man. Don't buy into this notion of the cultural identity of maleness. If you're a man and you like to, I don't know, do, uh, you know, crochet or something, <laughs> or you like to, uh, you know, do art, you're a little bit more emotional, you're not so uh, masculine, the, the cultural identity of masculine, you don't like to shoot guns like I do, or do sports, or or um, you'd rather, you know, listen to the arts, or work on art, that doesn't mean that you're more feminine, that just means that you're masculine in that aspect, as long as you're providing for your family, taking care of your responsibilities, training your children, loving your wife in a way that is honoring so that your children see what it means to be a man that loves his wife honorably. If you're able to provide for your family and the things that they need financially, emotionally, physically, those kinds of things, but you don't adhere to the cultural norm of of masculinity then i say who cares you're you're just as masculine as any other man because you're taking the role of your maleness as seriously as you can um and for the women out there if um you find yourself being a little bit more headstrong a little bit more um you know dominating in your relationship um it is perfectly feminine feminine of you to give your husband the opportunity to lead his family. It is perfectly feminine of you to find your fulfillment in raising children. It is perfectly feminine of you to find your um, identity as um, the, the caregiver of the household. And you should not be ashamed of that, especially if you and your husband have come together and have decided together that this these are the roles that each of you would take, especially because I think these roles are plainly um, mapped up for us in uh, the scriptures. Now, the way me and my wife run my household is exactly like that. Um, I am a provider, protector. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't do chores around the house. That doesn't mean that I don't... 
uh, sometimes wash the dishes or sometimes, you know, clean bathrooms or um, even put a load of laundry in the wash. But um, if I don't do those things, it's not like my wife is saying uh, to me, um, you know, this is I'm expecting you to do these things. No, if anything, she's extremely grateful for for all the help that she can get around the house and all the help that I can give her and vice versa. I mean, I'm extremely proud of my wife and the, all the hard work she does in raising our children. She homeschools our kids. So, um, you know, she is a wonderful teacher to our daughter who is just soaking up everything that my wife is giving to her. Um, through our homeschool curriculum. Um, and as a man, I am so grateful and so blessed to have a woman like this. Because I know this, um, that I'm very lucky and very fortunate to have a woman who is willing not only to um, to see what the role that God designed for her and find her fulfillment in that but also be willing to submit to my leadership as um, as her husband. Now, her submitting to me does not make her lesser of a human. Um, her being submissive to my leadership is just her recognizing that God has designed me for a specific role. And that role is to lead my family as a servant, to serve my family, to give up my time, my strength, my energy, to provide all of her needs and all of her wants for her. And she does the same for me um, by all the work that she does around the house. Um, and I don't know why people are ashamed to say that. And I don't know why society says that it is shameful to live this way. We are both extremely happy. We are extremely happy. I'm telling you, my marriage is one of the easiest marriages <laughs> that I know about, um, especially because I see some of the marriages um, that partake in our culture, and it's just difficulty after difficulty because, well, primarily they don't understand that God must be the center of that marriage. And if God is not the center of that marriage, then of course there will be difficulty. Secondarily, because there is a design by God that this marriage should be a, between a man and a woman. And only between a man and a woman. And I'm not ashamed to say that. As a Christian, as a born-again believer, um, marriage is designed to be between a man and a woman. And any of the marriage or supposed marriage that tries to adhere to anything different than man and, and a woman um, is going to uh, have difficulties in it. Um, and it's not going to tend or give to human flourishing as it is designed by God to, to, to be. Um, but my marriage is very, very happy. Um, I'm joyful with my wife. I I'm enjoying life with her. I'm enjoying our children with her. I'm enjoying um, just all that God ha is blessing us with in our family. Um, and in all honesty, um, I don't know why, but a lot of the time society wants to say that that is n a non-healthy marriage. And I don't understand why. If we're perfectly happy, if we per if we are healthy... If we are able to work through our problems together, we have not needed um, any counseling or therapy um, whatsoever because um, we've been able to recognize God's hand in the middle of our marriage. Uh, we're both uh, born-again believers, and we adhere um, to what the scriptures say about the roles in family and in marriage. Um so the Bible says that uh, women are to submit to their husbands and automatically, automatically, just that very, that very phrase, wives submit to your husband is like, um, it's like a bazooka to the face for feminists. It's like, it's like the worst thing you can ever say to a feminist or even to an egalitarian um, Christians who believe that roles are to be equal um, straight down the middle. And that's like a bazooka to the face because that's what the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 5. 
Verse 1. Wives, submit to your husbands. Now, that doesn't mean that she doesn't have a voice in her family, that I don't take into consideration her opinion and her, and her intellect and her and her ability to um, to think critically and to have questions and and to even um, have better ideas than me. I recognize that my wife is a brilliant woman. And so when she has better ideas than me, I'm able to recognize that and say, yeah, babe, that's a great idea. I didn't think about that. Let's do that instead. And so the whole purpose of leadership as men is not to lord it over our wives and not to say to our wives, well, I don't care what your opinion is. I'm going to do whatever it is that I feel like I'm doing. No, being a leader is recognizing when those who are under you have better ideas than you and you're willing to swallow your own pride and submit to those ideas. And so there's a lot of times where my wife will give me an idea or will have an opinion about something or will consider something a different way and she looks at things differently because she's designed differently. And so because of this, I'm able to look at her and recognize, man, she that is, that is a great idea. That is a better idea than mine, or you're right and I'm wrong. And it's not very hard for me to say that. It's not very hard for me to recognize these things. And um, so men out there, be men. Don't be afraid to be men because being a man means that you're willing to listen to your wife. You're willing even to... um, Put aside your own ideas and recognize your wife's ideas as better than yours. And women, being a wife means that you're willing to submit to your husband because you recognize God has designed your man to be the leader of your household. Um, And that the Bible even calls you to submit to your husband. And And that when God calls you to do something like that, it's not evil. Actually, it's meant for your good to adhere to what the scriptures say it's not wrong for you to do so Um, because the role of a man and a woman are beneficial Um, they are complementarian they complement one another the role of a wife the role of a husband the value of both of the roles are equal they are both enormously important They are both necessary when it comes to a happy and successful marriage. But that doesn't mean that they're supposed to be exactly the same right down the middle. Because God designed us to have differences in our roles as male and female. And only male and female. That's why there's a lot of problems in the transgender communities and the and the homosexual community is because there is no defined role for them it's just whatever everybody feels like doing and if that's what they want to do then who am i to tell them um no because i mean we live in a country where they can do whatever they want to do but what when it comes to expecting if god's okay with that i'm going to say no god's not okay with that god's not okay with those kinds of lifestyles those kinds of marriages because god did not design it that way you can enter into that if you want to but don't even think for a second that god is okay with those things because he's not um and so it's it's just up to christians like me um to show you what the scripture says about these things to tell you about the truth lovingly explain to you that god has um better things in store for you than the relationships that you're partaking in right now as a transgender person or as a homosexual person. God designed um, the family to be and to work in a specific way. And when you submit to the scriptures, when you submit to God, and when you submit to um, the work of the Spirit in your marriage, then you'll see just how wonderful marriage can really be. Because... God wants marriages to be successful, godly, Bible-adhering marriages. He's not going to um, 
he's not going to design something that it has uh, the absolute probability or the absolute um, he's not going to design something that he knows is going to fail he's going to design something that he wants to be successful and so when we learn to submit to that then we learn how to be successful in our marriage anyways that's all I wanted to say um, if you have any questions, please subscribe, leave a comment, a question below. Uh, we could talk about this more if you want to hit me up and we can, I can Skype you. We can, we can do a video together. That's cool too. Um, just let me know what you think and, um, appreciate you listening. God bless.